What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Welcome to Saturday. We have got uh, quite a show. We're going to be talking to Alex, W7HU. We're going to talk about what's going on with the recent uh, interference coming out of Cuba. We've got a lot of questions from you in a combination of the videos I posted, Alex posted, a number of people on YouTube have posted. And it's getting some traction in that it's, it's making the rounds kind of on the internet in terms of like web articles and other really interesting stuff. So I'm honored to have Alex out of here. And uh, yeah, just want to say thanks everybody for coming out and we'll get started soon. Enjoy the special memes today. <laughs> there was a bit of a trend that happened in the Ham Radio Crash Course ham meme page. And boy, uh, there was a lot of them. There's uh, good old Jeff Bezos. <laughs> Somebody went a little ham with, uh, with the meme. So enjoy that as we kick things off. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for coming out again to the Ham Radio Crash Course. Out here every Saturday to try and bring, I don't know, more ham radio to you. I have a lot of fun with playing around with fun, interesting things in ham radio and sharing it to you all. So if you're out there watching it and you're enjoying it, consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing. I would appreciate that. As I mentioned, we do have a big show, so we're going to get to Alex here shortly. I want to throw a couple of uh, notes out there. As we get closer to Huntsville, Leia's already uh, at work with some new merch ideas, and we've created a new collection it's called uh, i'm with the bands is the name of the uh the <laughs> is the name of the, the 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 new shirt collection she's doing this one is the one x crew t-shirt there it is with the hrcc one x crew that is a model of a band t-shirt if you will and we've got uh cat cups or i'm sorry antennas chili Touch Lamps, Cat Cups, HRCC Podcast. These are all shirts that came out of the podcast, at least some of the ideas that we kind of deep-dived. And uh, the Huntsville shirt, Ham Radio Crash Course, Huntsville 2021, which is uh, a number of very Huntsville-related things in that picture, which you can see right there. Hopefully, you can pick that out. So if you want to support the channel, you can go to hamtactical.com and pick up some shirts if you're interested. Get yourself a shirt. Helps out the channel. I appreciate it. Uh, also mentioning hamradiocrashcourse.com is where all of our links are to our Discord, our Facebook group. The way to support us on Patreon, if you want to do that, helps out the podcast too. And then links to all of our discount uh, discounts that we have for you know, things like uh, Palomar Engineers, HRCC73, get you 10% off, that kind of stuff. All right. Now, I, I'll, I link this in the description. The Ham Nation 500th episode is coming up in less than two weeks, and we are giving away an ICOM IC705, an AH705, an LC192 backpack. That's it. There's just there's a grand prize, and if you get it, you get it. So if you want to try and get in on that, it's free to enter. Link is in the description. And, uh, yeah, it's just basically your email and where we would send it to you. And we'll pick a winner live on the 500th episode, which is shaping up to be just a, a, a tremendous amount of work uh, for me. So should be quite the challenge, but uh, very fun. Okay, so who do I have on today? Today we're going to have W7HU, Alex, and, uh, boy, Alex has put out a couple of videos talking about what's going on down in Cuba, and he's he's live. He's got his radio on. We've got some questions here that I am very curious of and questions that you all have asked in the comments, and, and we're going to ask those and try and answer those live. But along with that, W4C SOS Cuba is a special event station that's going on right now. You can just search W4C on QRZ.com, and it'll give you more information on what they're doing. And as it is mentioned down here, we can just read that really quickly. We are a group of United States amateur radio operators who got together and decided to raise awareness about the current humanitarian crisis affecting the island of Cuba. Instead of taking it to the streets, we realize that our efforts will be more effectively or efficiently utilized by getting on the air and making a special event out of it. We invite you to get on the air and make CUSOs with us and then tell us what you can do to help spread awareness. We signed up for a one-by-one -one call W4C to make it 
an on-air event where if you participate there, are eligible for an EQSL certificate. So very cool. There's the certificate that they're going to have. So for those of you that maybe haven't seen my video or Alex videos, what are we talking about? Well, it's it's gotten picked up by websites like. Um, Vice and the I, uh, the IEEE did an article on radio jamming, specifically radio jamming of ham radio frequencies. And, and there's Alex right there. I got to say, Alex has got an amazing logo. So good job on that logo, Alex. I really love it. Uh, and it's been mentioned by the ARRL as well. Basically, what it is is it is this interference that's getting created. I did a video semi-triangulating it using Kiwi SDRs and something called TDOA and found that, yeah, pretty much it's originating from Cuba. So we're going to talk to Alex. We're bringing him on right now. Here we go. Alex, how are you doing, buddy? Hey, hello, man. Good evening <laughs> to you and to everybody. I appreciate you coming on. You know, it's it's been a wild uh, a week, I guess. You know, you've been you've been pretty busy yourself. I know you've been making the rounds a little bit. How, how's, how's your week been? Oh, man, pretty busy, pretty busy. Just I have to work. I have to take care of the family. Yeah. I went out uh, to support also the Cuban community with the In Miami protest, and I've been doing the special event, and I've been doing a lot of things. Yeah, it it, yeah. it shows. I've, I've seen your articles, um, obviously the videos. you got the special event station. So, you know... You're you're out there. You're you're supporting the the Cubans that that are you know having this issue back at home. Uh, but but tell us a little bit about you before we get into the nitty gritty of what's going on. Kind of what's your background as a ham radio operator? How long you been a ham? That kind of thing. Give people a kind of an idea. Well, I I started a, a ham radio when I was 13 years old. I was actually hunting lizards on my neighborhood, and I was passing by a house. And I heard a noise, and when mm -hmm. I looked through the windows, um, was a guy talking on a gigantic 160-meter uh, 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 transceiver. And I said, what is that? I said, hey, come over. And, and I heard that he was talking to somebody that was three kilometers away. And I said, wow, that's amazing, three kilometers away. Well, you know, 160-meter beam. Yeah. And uh, our local uh, radio station, you know, the commercial radio station, was uh, in um, 1480, 1.480 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. And, you know, 160 meter band, we was transmitting 1600 and something. So it was very close, oh, uh, 1800, 1800 mm -hmm. something. Well, the, the radio that the, the guy has was the a homemade radio. Oh, cool. So you can't imagine how many, you know, uh, harmonic that radio generate because it wasn't, you know, factory made and, you know, there wasn't enough filters and right. this and that. And the BFO was on, on the side, you know, and he received it with the, with the commercial radio. Yep. And, uh, well, every time that he pressed the PTT, okay. Mm -hmm. With the radios around two to three, four blocks, nobody can listen to the radio station to listen to him. <laughs> right, it right, was right. On, it was All on the harmonics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I talked to when I talked to uh, the guy, he told me, "What do you do?" I said, "Oh, I'm a singer. I imitate Eros Ramazzotti, which is an Italian singer." Mm -hmm. And he told me, "You want to sing for me?" And I grabbed the microphone and I sing for it. Blah 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 blah. And I said, "So the next day, when I went to my school, everybody was saying, hey, hello. I saw you on on. I, I listened to you on great." Uh, you're, radio you're, Florida. You're a you star. Were doing, yeah, you were doing the Eros Amazonte thing. They say, oh yeah, yeah, thank you. You know what that yeah. that is spike. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I feel something on my on my skin and say, oh my god, that's what I got to do. Yeah. So I went the next day to the house of, uh, of Amaury, Charlie, my seven Oscar Charlie, yeah. and over and over again until you know, I started going to the to the club and in, got involved into it. And I was, you know, as everybody, I was using a friend of mine there. Um, uh, he never used radio, so I used a club station in his call, and I make over a hundred on some countries with his call. I was right. <laughs> so you got his bit, call, of course, with his you, permission. Yes, you got bit I, hard, I, right? As a kid, yes. you got bit hard by the radio bug. It sounds like right yes. from the beginning, hooked you. Yes, yeah, and then I got the the test, and I got something named the Charlie Charlie mm -hmm. uh, with the certificate of capacity, and until I can build my radio and get inspected was when I got my license. Okay. It was a couple of years after that. and uh, But I was using the club station, struck Charlie Charlie. Mm -hmm. And to talk, you know, mainly in 160 meter. 
was uh, the, the band that I used to talk when at the beginning. And, and I love 160 meter, which uh, one day I can have an antenna for 160. You, you and, and me both. With this, <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you and I, me I, both. <laughs> hey, that's, that's a dream that maybe comes through very soon. Ho- hopefully. Me. For, for yes. Hopefully me too. I'll take a dream like that. Oh, <laughs> I'll dream a little dream. That's, that's great. <laughs> And then, you know, I, I, I became a, you know, ham radio operator and uh, I got my license, Charlie Lima 7 Hotel United, and then the, the Charlie Mike, and then the Charlie Oscar. Well, and then in between that, I learned uh, from good people like uh, Abel, uh, Charlie Oscar 6 X-Ray November, mm-hmm. uh, Abel Santos. He was, for me, he is the best, the best DXer that Cuba has in their story. In the entire history, he lives now in the Canary Island. He's Eco Medica X Ray November X Ray. Mm-hmm. Abel uh, Santos is his name. He was my teacher. Uh, not because uh, I asked him, it's because I was listening to him all the time. And my advice to the people is if you wanted to learn how to break into a pilot and how to make good DX, which is the part of the hobby that I like, mm-hmm. listen. Yeah. And then you listen. And then you listen again. And yep. if it's not I, too I much, you it. listen again. I love it. I love it. That's the, that's the right answer. Totally. Because best when you listen and listen and listen, you call the guy and you know who he is. Right. The name and you don't have to ask in the pilot, where it's, are you? Where it's not a big call? complex thing. It's just efficient, smooth, right, right, right through. Yeah, I agree. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, and, and, and that's how, you know, I started in the hobby and I lost the, uh, the, the DX, and then, of course, I was in Cuba. I didn't know English, but Abel was a good English speaker. Mm. So he actually uh, talked to me one day over the air and told me, do you have a telephone? I say, well, I have a public telephone next to my home mm-hmm. that you can call me there. He said, I'm going to call you. He calls, and he told me, hey, Alex, you cannot say, because I used to say, Quereset, Quereset, Charlie Lima 7, Hotel United, Quereset. Of course, people mm-hmm. can understand, but he said, you have to say, QRZ. Oh. QRZDX, <laughs> yeah, Charlie yeah, yeah. Lima 7, Hotel Uniform, QRZDX. Right. right. Okay? And then he teach me how to call secure, secure, secure DX, secure, yeah. secure Delta X-ray, Charlie Lima 7, Hotel mm-hmm. United, QRZ. Yep. You know? And then he teach me how to do that because I was saying that wrong, mm-hmm. you know? And, yeah. and I learned from him. And that was so nice of him that he didn't came in front of everybody on the band and told me, hey, you do that wrong. You have to say it this way. Right. It was very, very good. And that's why I earned his um, friendship and he earned my admiration, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I always admire him. That's beautiful. Uh, I, I love that, actually, the, the way you found radio. That's, that's really cool. So thanks for sharing mm-hmm. that. Well, Alex, you know what? Why don't you show us what's going on? You're, you're local, more local to the interference. It's 5 p.m. at my local time, so it's still bright and sunny out here and i'm well away but you got your radio turned on wow so the 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 jamming is still going on right is that the message yeah, the, you can the, take from as, that as, as i think uh, as long as i see there is three big jamming signal one is mm-hmm. on hold on yep to 15. Mm-hmm. the other one 257. Mm-hmm. The other one looks like a couple now. Yeah, there's four of them. It's in two fifteen, mm-hmm. and this is somebody talking. Oh, okay. They're like they they're got a good signal. And this is FT eight. Of course, FT eight, <laughs> almost the largest uh, interference yes. on the band. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> I'm so kidding. I'm kidding. I love FT eight. Well, okay. So it, it's still out there. You noticed it. Well, I guess tell us that. Uh, kind of explain what this is a little bit, and and when you noticed it. Okay, well, as you see, I'm gonna, you want me to leave this uh, image in that way when I talk oh, to people? Oh, you can flip back. You can flip back and okay. forth. It's good, but okay. people yeah, want yeah, to see yeah. your face. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. So I have my face right here. Now. There you go. There you okay. go. Okay, well, uh, everybody knows that on July 11th, which is the uh, the Rebellion Day for Cuba, and we have mm-hmm. to celebrate for now on every, every July 11th that uh, Cuba was in a rebellion, and everybody went out to the street to to uh, say libertad, libertad, that means freedom, freedom. Mm-hmm. And that's what they demand in freedom. So after I wake up that Sunday, uh, the 11th, which is going to be in my mind forever until I die, uh, doesn't matter what's, what happened in Cuba, that day is the day. That is the day that sparked 
the uh, the rebellion in Cuba. That's what the people said. Enough, enough, right. if enough. So, and then I was seeing that on my on my cell phone. Look at it and say all the videos that you can see there on the web and, and everything. And after around two o'clock or three o'clock, everything was stopping. They and, cut off the internet. Okay. Okay. Got yeah. The government of Cuba cut off the internet, the cell phone, and everything. Right. I tried to call my family. They didn't answer. Tried to call friends. They didn't answer because they they cut off all kind of communication. Right. They restored the voice communication after that. Of course, but you call there, you pay one dollar per minute. So pretty much the people don't call too much. They mm -hmm. they use WhatsApp better. And that well, they block all the social media when they restore that. There is internet, but it's limited, and it's slow. And it's limited and it's blocked the social media. The people are using those BPM, uh, right. Victor Papa uh, November. November, yeah, yeah, to to tunnel, uh, to tunnel. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yep. So I say, well, everybody's close. Let me use the first social media. So I went to uh, the radio, and right. here we go. There were Cuban there. Say, say, you guys know this? Oh, yeah, we know that. There's people in my neighborhood going out, and we talked to two guys. I have to say that. Um, uh, I, I I was there with Whiskey Bravo Ford, Charlie Lima, my good friend from Tampa, Florida. Uh, Charlie Lima means Cubano Libre, a uh, free Cuban. Okay. Uh, if you translate that to uh, in Spanish. Mm -hmm. And uh, Wilmar Valderrama, me and him were talking, and there were two guys from Cuba, one from the east, one from the west, mm -hmm. that they talked to us. They told us, you know, a couple of things that uh, I didn't want to repeat it because they can get in trouble. Actually, in fact, they're, 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 they're not transmitting anymore. One of them I know for sure that they told him that he cannot transmit the count. I think the conference carried the radio or they, they closed the radio station and they put a- Who, who um, did that? A, who did that specifically? The, go the government of the Cuba. The government of Cuba stepped in and, and yes. took the radio. You know, the government, the, of course, they have their, you know, their own people, the people who, uh, the secret police to right. uh, always watching the ham radio in there. Mm -hmm. And that's what they, they did. They, they just told them, you guys cannot transmit. Here you go. We go. If you do it, you know what's going to happen to you. Right. As far as I know, they're not being prisoned, and I hope not. And that's why I say if something happened to them. The only people that have the fault is the Cuban government. Because mm -hmm. I don't think, because you say that you don't like something, they have to put you on jail. You know, mm -hmm. They didn't say any anything that they didn't feel, but, you know, that's uh, what's going on. Right. So, and then we were talking and talking and talking. And uh, there was a, a guy uh, from Havana, which actually is now fighting with some um, people in Florida. I think somebody from the Northern Florida mm -hmm. uh, with some Carlos uh, from Florida. I forgot his call sign. So I don't know if you remember when I, and I put the volume on my radio, there was uh, two people, blah, blah, yes. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Well, this guy is Charlie Oscar Tu Bravo Victoria. Mm -hmm. uh, his name, uh, I, for, I always forgot his name because uh, he represents nothing to me. And that's why I don't remember his name. I remember his call because it's the only thing that uh, I remember, the yeah. radio related thing. And this guy was, uh, you know, you know how the, the socialists, how the communists act. Right. If you're not with them, they try to denigrate you. They try to uh, blame on you, saying bad things about you to try to push you back. Mm -hmm. But well, he didn't did that. I mean, mm -hmm. he couldn't did that to us because we know how, you know, the operandi, operandi mode that they do, you know? They right. try to intimidate you, telling you things, and blah, blah, blah. Well, they're doing that on our YouTube comments. <laughs> they're already on the YouTube comments, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I got some, yeah. I don't know if you did, but I definitely did. Yeah, 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 but, uh, you know, that's okay. This is a free country. Of I course, can express of course. myself the, the, way, the way that I want. Well said. And there is people here that they don't know. And, and, and like I say, you know, I, I'm not going to answer every comment that I see mm -hmm. on, 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 my, on my videos because, uh, you know, um, especially if it's nonsense. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I'm not going to spend my time to tell somebody that doesn't know anything about Cuba, that does not have a family in Cuba, and doesn't care about Cuba. Right. It's, it's easy to say things. Uh, here in America with food and electricity and internet and thing and that. Yeah. What, what is not easy is to let your own people suffer and die on the streets of Havana. That's not easy. Right. So that's why I'm a step ahead. If you know me, I've been here like uh, pretty much almost a year with my YouTube. I transmit every time I live stream. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I never talk about politics over the radio. I'm a nice guy. I talk to everybody. I do mostly DX. But that July 11 changed my life. Mm -hmm. Because I say, how come a Cuban people that are oppressed, that they don't have food and anything there, are fighting on the street? And me right here in, in Miami are going to be silent. No way. I have to tell them what's going on. And if in any way I can help them, Sure. I will, because, yeah. you know, I want Cuba to be free. You know, I want the Cuban people to make a decision if they like somebody or they don't like uh, that person or if they like another one, like mm -hmm. I do here. You know, I have my choice to vote for whatever people I like. Right. I can say I don't like Obama. I can say I, I don't like Trump. I can say I don't like Biden. I can say anything and nothing has happened to me because this is a free country and I'm protected by the First Amendment. Correct, correct, versus you know, a, a totalitarian regime, which is yeah. enforcing the will upon the people. Exactly. Right? One it's, of the most negative comments that I see on my videos is, oh, the things that you're doing is politics. Hey, who tell you that we cannot talk politics? It's, we can't talk politics. We, we it's can. an ethic thing. Yes. It's an ethic thing that you have to avoid politics and religion. Yes. But nobody's going to tell me if I can not talk politics, even... We're not talking politics over the year. We only say this is a special event station to raise awareness of a humanitarian situation in Cuba, period. That is We're a misnomer. Saying, yeah. That is We're a misnomer saying, people have about you, – you can talk politics uh, on the radio. You can. They, but it's supposed to be in a way that uh, we should all be able to turn our radio off and still be friends, right? If you can be adults and have a discussion, great. Yeah. Th that, that, that's – Otherwise, you know, it's just like you were saying, why would you spend time to have discussions with people that don't care about your family, don't care about what's going on at all? It's, it's like, OK, it's, it's not worth the effort. Right. You'd you rather know, just pretty, pretty much those people mm -hmm. that live here, but they don't like America. See, if America is so great that it's people that live here and they don't like God, but they don't go away. Mm -hmm. Those people that are saying that Cuba is a paradise. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Rubio is helping the people that want to move to Cuba to expedite you're moving to Cuba. So if you guys are interested to move to Cuba, uh, contact uh, uh, Rubio, Marco Rubio. He's going to help you all to move to Cuba and see if from Cuba you're going to say <laughs> the same thing that you're saying from here. Because it's not the same. Yeah. Same from here, the same from there. So with with that said, let me hit you with some questions about the practicals on what's going on. Because you you have a you have an insight, obviously, because you, you, you speak to – friends in Cuba, you have family in Cuba. The, the question I get more than anything on the video I posted is, why is the effect on 40 meters, and, and particularly the part you showed, the, the lower side, you know, the 7.1 megahertz and upside of 40 meters, why is that so important to the, to the people in Cuba? Okay, perfect. 40 meter band, and, and I explained that one or two people, and I hope that the other people Read that. Mm -hmm. 40 meter band is the most common band that ham radio operators use in Cuba. And I'm going to tell you why. First, because all the ham radios uh, in Cuba build their own radio. And it's a lot easier to build 40 meter rig because um, there is two or three guys that design radios, homemade radios in Cuba that the band that they designed for was 40 meters. So pretty much all the slander, the double side band and the uh, GC 500 and all those uh, homemade uh, radios that the people are in having Cuba, they were designed for 40 meter. That's number one. Number two, guys, you pass a test to get a license. 40 meter band is the perfect band to work between Miami and Havana and Matanzas and Camagüey because there is no escape of propagation pretty much the entire day. If you're going to go to 20 meter, if you want to talk to somebody in Havana, you're not going to make it right. because the step of propagation, that's very simple. That's the other reason. The other thing is because the proximity and proximity and we are in, in Miami, we have good propagation with Cuba. And what happens in Miami? Mm -hmm. The biggest uh, Cuban community, the exiles are here in Miami and that's what they scare. Right. You know? So really, it sounds like there's two major points here. 
One, many of the radios that are being used and operated in Cuba are homemade radios, which I think we can draw a, a, a comparison and parallel to the culture of uh, the older automobiles that are that are maintained and kept up and running that we see in the United States, right? How long the, the Cuban people and, the, and kind of the tradition of keeping vehicles going and stuff like that, right? I would, it, radio's kind of like that too. They, they're not getting brand new 7300s in Cuba, right? There is, a, there is a couple of them, actually. I sent two of them. Oh, but but you sent them. There's not a yes. ham radio outlet in Cuba. They're not no, selling sir. ICOM radios no, in the storefronts, right? And but, for, those yes. that, for those that doesn't know, I've been helping many, many friends that I'm not going to say it. Mm. I send people money to buy radios there, and I send radios, and I send many antennas and many right. other things. But, Cuba, but, you know? but they're not ordering on gigaparts and having it no, dropped off. They don't go no. to a ham radio outlet and pick up radio. That doesn't exist in Cuba. No, so unless somebody exist. ships radios, they're not getting them, right? Exactly. Okay. Or exactly. or they build it in Cuba. In Cuba. Yeah. Okay. And then the second point is 40 meters is a really good daytime band and nighttime band for Miami to Cuba. Because the distances yes. are, are perfect for both day-night cycle. And again, Cuban people are talking to Cuban-American family members in the States, right? It's, it's, yes. a, it's, it's, a, it's the original social media, right? It is a situation where the Cuban government, if it's difficult and they can't communicate like they did with social media, how do they talk? Ham, ham radio 40 meters, right, is very effective. Uh-huh. Yeah. Exactly. Because yeah. they know uh, why they're going to jam 20 meters if nobody's going to talk with Cuba from Miami in 20 right, meters. That's illogical. You right. Know? So, of so course. everybody in California who's like, I can't talk to Josh on 20 meters, that's why, because it flies right over the top of their head. So imagine you're in Florida and you're trying to talk to your family in, in Cuba. You can't on 20 because it's just. Of course. Right not, over not either, either in, in 15, 10, you know, 17. Right. There's no band. The perfect band is 40 meter. So that's why they jam it. Or 80 meter, but 80 meter is only a nine, and 80 meter has a huge antenna. Big antenna. And, get, yep. and guess what? Yep. It's also difficult. Yep. Yep. Very, all so good. So 40 points. meter is the perfect one. Mm-hmm. So I hope everybody understands that because that was the question I got more than anything. And I'm like, guys, come on, just think about it. But anyway, so that that's perfect. Uh, were there any other bands? Any bands, HF, VHF, UHF, that was uh, affected by the the government? Did they do something well, to any other they, parts of ham radio? They are not jamming the, the two meter band, but they turn off pretty much all the repeaters in Havana, but one. So when and when we say they turned off, we're going back to the conversation of the the, the police, government of the Cuba, government shut down the repeaters. Yeah, the government, which is the owner of the FRC, the Cuban mm-hmm. Federation of Ham Radio. Mm-hmm. Uh, told them, told them, turn off all the the repeater. And I have a video on my YouTube channel about it. And I have a recorder of a guy telling that yes, we did that because of the people uh, across the stretch of Florida. You know, yeah, our neighbors are are listening. We don't want them to come and tell us things that we don't want to hear. You know and, what I mean? And I, I I don't want you to say any names or anything like that. But when you're being told that the repeaters are shut off, these are you're being told by people you know in Cuba. Yes, of course. Okay. And and plus, we have mm-hmm. friends in front in the keys that activate the, the the repeaters all the time. Right, they can't key they're them. Right, activated. there's no. They're, they're, they're not dead. activated. Yeah, yeah. But they hear them. They hear them on simplex. But oh. when they talk to them, that when they talk to them, the other guys talk to, and of course, he's far away. There is easy to jam the two meter band because. Right. We don't have a, a one kilowatt amplifier on two meter band. Right. If you know what I mean. If we have a, a, a boat in a one kilowatt amplifier and we go 14 miles away from Cuba on the international water, mm-hmm. I can podcast there for the entire day and they will listen to me. You know what I mean? But uh, we don't have those resources. Yeah. No, I, I appreciate that. Uh, so th- we got a couple of questions. Before we flip over, uh, actually, Alex provided some really interesting news that we're going to talk about um, here shortly. But we got in a couple comments. I, d- I did get a super chat. Thank you so much, Felix, for the super chat. But two people have mentioned this. Uh, William Chiron and uh, Felix Farquharson ask, is there anything anyone that, that hams, is there anything we can do um, to assist the, the, the people in Cuba going through what they're going through? Not just hams, but, you know, anyone in, in Cuba. Yeah, well, I, I'm telling you, the only thing that I'm asking the people to do is this. Share in your social media, hashtag SOS Cuba, hashtag Freedom for Cuba, sure. hashtag Biden Help Cuba. That's the only thing that I'm, that I'm asking, because what happened is 
for example, there is many Cuban people that, that are wealthy in this yeah. country that are uh, ready to pay for the internet for Cubans. Yeah. What happened? Uh, there is a project with balloons and the internet to provide free internet to the Cuban people. I love okay? this. Yeah. Okay. And that's that's the uh, Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, mm -hmm. and Marco Rubio, and uh, uh, other uh, House representatives yeah. are actually pushing that to the federal government. But federal government is not acting. We need the signature or Mr. Biden. Right. And we say we don't want the federal government to pay for it. The Cuban community and the right. friends of the Cubans will sure. pay for. It. Sure. And, 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 and I'm agreed to, to not, you know, to write a check and send it to them and make my contribution. Mm -hmm. But for now, there is no money, no radios that you can send, nothing that you can do to send something material to them. It, is it well, just going to get confiscated? Do... It, like if you send something to Cuba, yes. it's just going to get exactly. taken by the government, right? Exactly. They, they're going to go exactly. through the mail. They're going to okay. So that that that's what exactly. I was always worried about. It's like yes, I would love. Yes. How yeah. many Baofengs can I put in a box and ship them? Right? Like no, it, it's, not gonna it's not going to work. It's not going to work. Right? It's not going to work. You're going to yeah. lose your time, your effort, and, and, yeah. and I like the people. You know the, the intention of the people. Yeah. But in this case, the the least that we can do as a as a U.S. citizen and uh, ham radio operator, call your representative and tell them, uh, please uh, do something to help the Cuban people mm -hmm. or hashtag uh, SOS Cuba. And that's what I'm asking the people because if we make noise, mm -hmm. that when you know the White House will, will, will see, you know, the reaction of the American people, yes. and they'll say, well, we have to step and do something. Because imagine this there is people that are asking for the uh, military intervention to Cuba, which is the humanitarian military intervention. Right. But like I say, even if we cannot do that, the internet, provide the internet to the Cuban people, I yeah. think is one of the most important things. You know why? Because they Access got information. organized, <laughs> they got organized via social media. That's of course. how they start in the eastern part of the island. They put that on social media. The people from the center of the island saw that and they went out to the streets and everybody went, nobody organized that. That right. was an explosive. That was something simultaneously. But that was because of the of the social media, because right. of Facebook and Instagram and those social media. And then what we need to do is provide them with internet, the way they can send the live video and show the, the, the people in the world, not only in the United States, the, the what the government is doing, massacrating the people there. So that's the proof. And then tell the United Nations and, and all of the other organization, uh, of, hey, here, there is a problem. The government's, uh, you know, killing people. The government have the weapons. The people don't, and they're fighting for their freedom. They're not looking for the vaccine. They have three vaccines in Cuba. They're not looking for, you know, for for money. They're looking for freedom. That's the main the main thing that they're asking for: freedom. And I think everybody deserve deserve in this life to be free. I think that's what I think. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. Well said. Uh, yeah, I think that was the big thing that, that I wanted to make sure we asked. And by the way, so everybody in the chat, uh, we're going to take questions. The best way to, to, to send a question in to, to talk to Alex and I is going to be tag me, Ham Radio Crash Course. I'll see the, the bright tag, and then I'll be able to copy it. So, Alex, you sent an image, uh, and I, I've been really anxious to, to talk about this. Uh, I think it's time. You want to you wanna share that now and kind of explain what's going yeah. on? Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So, Alex, explain what we're looking at here. Okay, that's um, uh, we call that a sombrilla, no, an umbrella antenna. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know what is the uh, the uh, the name in real name? Uh, Delta. It's, uh, it's a discone. 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 Antenna. Okay, yeah. the discone antenna. Well, and that's those... a that's a big antenna, everybody. That's yes, huge. Well, actually, if you saw uh, yesterday on Instagram, there is a guy Charlie Oscar Seven Whiskey Tango. He posted one. Of course, it's not that picture. Mm -hmm. That's something that he wanted to post it. And, mm -hmm. uh, uh, happens that this guy, he, he went to school with me. He went to the uh, high school with me mm -hmm. and the uh, pre-university as well. If you go and check his uh, QRZ page, you're going to see what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, and then there was another guy. In another well, no, but what is, what, 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 where is this from? You got to, we're, 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 we're not telling people where, where did this come from, Alex? <laughs> don't, that, don't say that, names, don't names, of that course. But, is yeah. from the, that is from the Eastern part of the island. Eastern and part of Eastern part of the okay. island. Yeah. And of the this island. is just one Alex or is there more like no, this? That is uh, as far as I know, twenty one that are utilized for jamming. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
as they told me that uh, they have a system of 21 of those antennas uh, that they use into jamming. And what they do is they put the jamming for two minutes, they have the other one ready, and they turn off this one. And that way, when you did your your mapping thing, yep. you saw that sometimes it was on the water, sometimes it was on the center. You, that's and why it wasn't traded. always centered, because it changes. The, the, the it's jamming. Changing. It is it's like a flashlight. If right. they open one, boom, boom, it's blinking yep. all over the country. So, but the the main thing are in in Havana. They they have three or four in Havana, mm -hmm. in Havana area, you know, in the western part. Right. And they run fifteen kilowatts, mm -hmm. fifteen thousand watts, fifteen, 15 kilowatts. Fifteen kilowatts are connected yes. to that antenna. Yes, sir. Right on. That's what that's what I well, that's not what right they on, told me. but yes, that's that is the, that is the information you're being shared. Yes, yes I, I understand. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. And I cannot say who told me that. No, of course not. And I, I'm not asking that. I don't want to know. Yeah, uh, boy, we're getting a lot of good questions. So I appreciate that, everybody. If you keep them coming, but, but you can ask you can ask the question to any ham radio in Cuba, and they will yeah. say that by some way or another one they got interfered from those from those antenna. They call it la antena de sombrilla. The right. umbrella antenna. So I was. They, uh, used, they used those to interfere in radio and TV Martin. That was right. the main purpose of that. So uh, th this, like this look, this antenna is basically the same style of antenna that was from the 1960s and, and before that. And that, I don't know, there, there's some feeling to me like a lot of things are kind of like probably old maybe old Russian. I don't know. Military surplus type stuff. Maybe. I don't yeah. know. I don't, I don't know, know. I know. I know they they, they install those to uh, to jam in the uh, radio from Miami, so mm -hmm. they don't want the people to listen to a free message. Yeah, well, so I've got some comments that came in on my YouTube, and we'll we'll take these before um, we take the live chat. So here's here's one of them. They can't provide food uh, power or food to their people, but they have the power for high wattage jammers. I, that's more of a statement, I think, than a, than a question. But I thought that was uh, well said. So I, I was like, eh, it's, how is it that they have the power? Uh, t to spend all this time in, in jamming all these people, yet the the people are in the streets upset about things, right? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think that's You know, that you know what happened? Mm -hmm. You know what happened? The communists. The, there is a small group that live like a like a capitalist. They have everything. Their their family goes outside. Yeah. Their, uh, Fidel Castro's son owns a boat that is twenty one million dollars, and he yeah. goes around the Mediterranean. Yeah. And uh, Miguel, well, Miguel yeah. Diaz Canel, the president now of Cuba. Uh, the wife is going to, it, it goes to Mexico to shop in the malls there and come back to Havana. But the people in, the, in Cuba, they're going to make a line to see what they, whatever they can get for eat. So right. the, the peop, those people have air conditioned, big uh, cars, nice houses, uh, pools and everything. All the luxury that the, the Cuban people doesn't have. Right. So uh, they said the socialism is equal and, and it's not. You know, it's not equal. Uh, right. It, well, what, whatever you would call that anything, brand of communism. They use anything yeah. to oppress the people and yeah. keep them power. They don't care if they're going to spend millions of dollars on electricity to power those uh, jammers, mm -hmm. but they have to keep the control. Right. That's what they want. Uh, so from K, well, Kezit, I think is maybe how you pronounce that. I -R Ironically, I feel this jamming signal will only achieve more world focus and publicity. So in the end, the jamming might be a good thing. I think so. I mean, so far the the publicity that's come out about what's going on in Cuba. By the way, I think I don't I don't think it's a huge surprise what's going on in Cuba. I think many people have known about what's going on in Cuba for many many years. But this is just kind of the thing that kind of brings it back up to the surface, right? To to get it in front of people all over again. What what do you think about that? Well, yeah, I know, I know that. Uh, I mean, I would love them to stop and being you know damage uh, the the ham radio band. Because they're not only affecting the ham radio from Cuba, but well, that's the main purpose, to avoid them to talk to us. And, you know, they don't want the message to go there. But they're, they're jamming um, the people from uh, Europe, Central and South America. Right, right. It, it uh, gets everybody. all the way down to Brazil. I mean, so th these, this interference, and, and it's exactly. coming up, actually. This question, maybe it's the next one. Let me see. 
Uh, oh, so that's another one. I, I don't know if you want to comment on this. Uh, I don't have any information in this. But when somebody says the alphabet groups, they're referring to like CIA, FBI, that kind of stuff. There's a There was a lot of comments I got that this is all just the Americans doing the jamming. Um, do, do you have any opinion on that? Uh, if you don't, it's okay. No, we'll skip I it. I don't. Well, I don't. I don't know because I don't know what they mean with the alphabet group and anything. I'm, they they mean know, like uh, the CIA or the FBI. They, well, they're just basically I, saying it's the Americans. I don't think. It. I don't think they will do that uh, because how come they were listening to us and they start jamming us uh, on one frequency and then the other one? Mm -hmm. And I mean, it was obviously that was the Cuban people, and actually, uh, unless they can hide a transmission in the island and transmit from there mm -hmm. because the signal is not from Miami but the signal is 60 degrees in most part of Cuba okay mm -hmm. the signal is 60 70 degrees I mean the, the signal goes all the way down and they cannot even right. talk on the radio they, they open the refrigerator and they, they, they listen to the, the jamming <laughs> signal in there <laughs> right, right right that is from there I don't they're know decoding FT8 with the refrigerators I don't, know, yeah. I don't know what's going on if they are together doing this but it's from Cuba what I'm saying is from right. Cuba Okay. You know, and, and I mean, you're, you're uh, I mean, that's actually kind of interesting because if you're talking about homemade uh, radios, you're starting to get into the point of like homemade radio with that much power going into it, you could actually damage. No, it. and listen, there is no Cuban that can afford to pay mm -hmm. for the electricity. They don't stop since Sunday 11. Mm -hmm. Who is going to pay for that electricity? I'm telling you, right. um, a doctor in Cuba made fifty dollars now a, a month. Right. So, hello. Right. There's no way that they're going to pay for the electricity. Yeah. Uh, this comment, I think, is just a carry-on of what we were saying about 40 meters. Um, I, 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 Alex put too fine a point on it, so I think we can skip this one. Uh, okay, so Nathan, this was a really interesting one. This one said, this is more likely to be spurious signals from the Cuban government jamming Cuban radio stations, stations with poorly engineered equipment. Jamming only a portion of the 40-meter amateur band doesn't really make a lot of sense for numerous reasons. So I'll, I'll, I'll reply, and then I'll let you give your thoughts. Okay, well, Hold I'm on, telling me... you this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, um, the, the, there is uh, three categories in Cuba. Yeah. But the, the third category, they only can talk from 7100 to 7100, uh, 7125. Oh. Okay. So that's like the license classification. Yeah, and those are the younger operators, the, okay. the generation, the new kids, the, the young people, the teenagers, the, the, the 30s, the 40 people. Now, the old ones that have uh, the CO, that they're being there for many years, that they can go up the way to 300. And, you know, that's pretty, 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 pretty uh, easy to determine. You know? Right. But the thing is, the people that come in those things, they don't know, you know, how the segments are divided in Cuba, stuff like that. You know people I mean? are commenting without fully understanding the licensing structure in Cuba is basically what you're saying. Exactly. And but, the way that the Cuban act, I mean, the people don't go over to Honda. They usually, um, that thing, because they wanted to talk to European and they talk mm -hmm. to people from Miami, that they usually from 125 and above all the way to 175. Mm -hmm. And those are the frequency. There is right. a jamming signal of 115 on 215 because there is another group of Cubans that talk to them all the time right? on, on 210, and they move to 215, and they put it on 215. Recently. So it's these are frequency agile jamming, right? And what you just said, the, the base level for the, for the Cuban license, given such a small access to HF, those four transmitters, or, or however many that they're cycling through, yeah. pretty much swallows up that whole frequency space Yeah, and with that massive local, power. Right. Yeah, since they're local in there, the harmonic and the, the wide of band, they're not right. radio that doesn't have any filtration. Right. So and, when, when we're no. here, when I'm in Southern California and I'm picking up these signals, it's the size of a single sideband, basically. But if I was in Cuba, it would be all encompassing broadband noise, right? That's what everybody needs to exactly. understand. That they're putting out so much power, and it is broadbanded, but it is localized or specifically targeting the Cuban people. The fact we're hearing it means that it is not poorly designed equipment, because I'm hearing it in Southern California. It's heard in Brazil, like on my video. It's heard in Europe. So mm -hmm. the, the idea that it's just spurious emissions, that it's just haphazard equipment that's being put out there is not true. It's a lot of power. It's at least somewhat efficient antennas and, to be able to and, get and out I the way it does. And I guarantee yeah. you this. 
If now a group of Cubans go to 7250 in a star, a, a net there and talking about the government mm -hmm. or talking about the situation in Cuba, they're going to put a jamming signal there. Guaranteed. Oh, that would, that would be interesting if they went up that high. Then you're then you're really getting into a whole bunch of spaces, right? Where people would start to really ask some questions. You know, but, uh, for sure. And, and uh, you know, we yeah. are on the special event, and we focus on, but we focus. But after that, I think I will, I will do a test, and I will go up, and if that happens, I will go back to you and That's say. That this is, is an interesting, you know what? That's an interesting test, Alex. I like that. Uh, so Rob Yunz, he says, if it, if, I, if it were jamming, it would be broader. It's too narrow to be effective. We've already, we just answered this, but I've got it queued up. So plenty of stations talk over it, and it's easy to go around. It's something other than a jammer. So I think we've hopefully mitigated that. The the Cuban space for the first level of, first level of license, right? Is that the? The, the third one. Yeah. Third the, third one. One. The, the third one, the second one, and the first. The first is like the, that's uh, the, the extra the, here. That's the slice. The first one is the extra, yeah. But that's the, the one that has the, the small slice of 40? The small size of 40 is the technician, which is the Charlie Lima. Right. You saw. So, so the, the, the place where the most amount of amateurs are is the band is the band space that exactly this interference is happening on. Of course, because the, the older people want to talk to the new guys. Then they are reunion. Right between those frequencies and they go all the way to the edge to 7125 right and, you know that was the you know we went to 7130 the first time and because we doesn't want to go to uh 7125 because mm -hmm. you know we can go out of uh, band and we went to 7130 and then they start jamming signal there but they're not only jamming that the, the next and then we moved to 7170 they jamming the two signal and then the next day they're jamming also the 115 because it's right on the center of the band that they use there, right? You know, and yeah. and they have, uh, you know, it's common sense. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, yeah, I, I just mentioned this again. Communist government jamming. Are we sure this isn't from America? Again, the the TDOA algorithm that I ran points that it is in Cuba. We showed the antenna earlier. This is one of how many antennas you said, uh, Alex? That there is least at least on the island. Of what did these, you say? Um, the umbrella antennas. How many did you say there was roughly that, that you well, know of? Well, I know uh, I I know that in the the town that I used to live, there is one. And pretty much in every single town, you have one. Okay, there is a hundred and forty nine municipality there. Maybe there is a hundred and forty nine. But mm -hmm. there was uh, we I, we have the information. I have a, a message telling me that there were twenty one that has been using for this jamming. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they're they're turn off and turn on uh, those ones, right? Because believe me, uh, when you talk to a Cuban ham radio, they try to about talk politics, and if you're going to ask them over the air, they're going to say that they love the revolution because they know they they've been there, and right. they're going to get trouble if they say right. the opposite way. Right. Right. So, I mean, I talked to somebody who told me, ah, but I talked to a guy and he told me that everything is good and he loved the revolution. Say so, yes. Right. Where that he told you over the phone? No, over the air. Hello. Mm -hmm. Obviously, I will say that if I've been there, I don't want to go to prison. Right, you know? right, right. Of course. Yeah. I, I'll comment directly. Somebody asks, uh, John says, don't believe it's spurious per, uh, immersions because why would they knock out the two-meter repeaters? So, if, yeah, physically, they're, they're shutting these repeaters down, right, Alex? is that That's, the, again, what, what's happening. I, I think people need to understand. Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the last, I think this is the last one. Uh, Ron says, "Well, the Cuban station should never have talked about the politics in the first place, but the jamming may have happened anyway." I will check it out. I am old enough to remember the woodpecker. Uh, I would like to remind everybody, Alex, you already mentioned it at the beginning of the show, but I think it deserves repeating. You can talk about politics on ham radio. You absolutely can, but you you have to be able to have a mature enough conversation that. It's, it doesn't become a problem on the air, right? I think that's the, the, the main takeaway that we should say. And by ethic, by ethic, you don't talk politics and you don't talk religion. Because sure. Let me tell you, there is a lot of people, a lot of party, a lot of way of think, and a lot of religions. Mm -hmm. There is more religions than happy kids in the earth. You right. know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. Yeah, there is hundreds of religions. So um, you, by ethic, you don't talk religions or politics. And I never talk religion or politics on, 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 on my radio when I talk. I always do DX and I call it, I have a pilot, and I talk to people this and this, but this is an emergency communication. We need to spread the word. We need to tell the Cuban people what's going on. Mm -hmm. But in this case, 
the special event is to raise awareness of the American people that does not know what's going on in Cuba to ask them, please share the hashtag SOS Cuba, and that maybe will help mm -hmm. some projects that the DeSantis, uh, Governor DeSantis, that want to get free internet to Cuba. Imagine Cuba with free internet, not controlled by the government. If, if that, by the way, if that starts going down, Alex, and there is, uh, it's it, and it's paid for by just people providing donations, please tell me. Yes. Because I will be donating for sure. Of course, and I will do it. And I know many, many Cuban, the people who believe in in the free country, who believe in freedom, yeah. will donate even five bucks. But, but there is wealthy people that are willing to pay for even the company yeah. that provides that service. They're willing to give pretty much, uh, you know, also a, a big discount because they wanted to cooperate. Right. They wanted to help. You know? uh, so here's a question, and I, I don't know the answer to this. That's why I, I brought it up. And, um, you know, I, obviously we can't speak for all people, but I'm curious, what do you think? Do you think that the Cuban people are, are sick of the communist regime that's in Cuba? Or, I yes, mean, sir. You, you think so? Is that a pretty general statement at this point? Yes. Okay. Yes. I, I, yes. I, I don't know that. This is fascinating to me. So thank and, you for— And, you know, yeah. they're not, they, there were some protesting for food and for, uh, for the— pandemic or anything for vaccine they were protesting and it's clear in all the videos i'm not in that they're mm -hmm. saying libertad libertad patria y vida that's what they say mm -hmm. they're Which not saying give us that team liberty us right now power. basically right is exactly. that the translation exactly yeah. okay you know that's what they want they want libertad they want right. freedom uh okay so this is more of a question on the TDOA. Would you be able to pinpoint something more accurately if you have those towers closer to each other, or would you need more of them to make it more effective, or is it limited by method itself? So this is a TDOA question based on my video, and I'll answer it really quickly. Uh, TDOA algorithm, at its simplest terms, is something that uh, the military uses for tracking fast-moving planes, depending on the, the type of frequencies that they're using. So in short, yes, but maybe not right it, it really depends on the receiver the antenna the the frequencies being used etc and at a certain point you get so close that it becomes moot and you just start using traditional rdf radio direction finding so i brought that in just so i could answer that one at the end because i did get a lot of questions on uh tdoa so yeah there's the uh, antenna again and, and i i want i want everybody to understand how big this is and i have a, an image of a similar antenna not nearly as this complex that that's multi-banded it looks like uh, this is, let's see, where is it? This is the uh, disco antenna that is at the Titan Missile Museum. And you can see the car and the little building in the background. It, it is a huge antenna, a massive antenna. And that, it, that antenna is from the 60s as well. So the assumption there, I assume, is that this is also 60s era uh, type equipment. All right, so we got a couple of questions in the chat, the live chat. So thanks everybody for commenting. We're going to take these, and I'll probably wrap up our time here with Alex. All right, um, let's see. So first question, actually, this came in a little bit late, but I, I like this question so much, and I think it'll help frame some of this as we go for, forward. No code general asks, I may have missed Alex saying this, but do the Cubans have power limits uh, for their licenses? Oh yes, of course. Um the uh before when i was there there was 500 watts for this charlie mike which is the second category right and two kilowatts i think two kilowatts for the charlie oscar that's pretty good though mm -hmm. i'll take two kilowatts. that's what i think yeah i'll take two kilowatts <laughs> mm -hmm. all right uh let's see stephen walters asks it is 103 miles, the closest distance between Cuba and Florida. So why aren't uh, using NVIS antennas or other bands? So I think we talked about 80, but does anybody use NVIS antennas in Cuba for maybe better NVIS propagation? I don't know. When I was there, they, they didn't. So what, I don't what, know what is the antenna they primarily use? That's a, that's a question. I mean, they use a dipole antenna, a homemade dipole, dipole for, yeah, that's it, a dipole. Mm -hmm. I That's guess they, they could use. do NVIS. They just have to lower it to the ground, right? Get it lower to the ground. Yeah. Okay. But, uh, you know, if, when you put a source of antenna, I mean, that is, uh, they have people, and I think now they're utilizing drones, mm -hmm. to, the drone to control, and they go over the, um, the top of the houses looking for um, 
uh, disk, I mean, to um, satellite antennas. Right. So if they see that you have a satellite antenna, they knock on your door and they confiscate it. Yeah. Because they don't want any other, I mean, any kind of antenna that is not regulated and is not approved by the government. You know? So here's because a- they don't want the people to get information from the outside. Sure, of course. I mean, that's their their main. I mean, why would they be jamming if they didn't want? The Before they used the snitches, the snitches. Now I think they used the drone. <laughs> right. So here's a question. Uh, this is a this is a pretty good one. Let's see. Can I legally talk to an operator in Cuba if the government has banned the use? Are we USA are not supposed to even acknowledge the illegal operators? Are we allowed to even talk to the people in Cuba, Alex? Yeah, we are allowed as soon as they identify themselves with uh, Charlie Oscar or mm-hmm. Charlie Mexico or Charlie Lima. Yes, we are allowed. We, we are allowed to talk to them. Sure. And yeah, most of the case, uh, they, for example, I think now after what happened on the 11, they actually uh, send message to the people that, you know, they cannot talk to me. Mm-hmm. They put me on the blacklist now because I've been telling them what's happened. That happens right. in the past with many people. Um, well, I'm assuming I am now too. So, but just by know, having you know, out here, right? I know, <laughs> I know my my friends. Yeah, my my friends that no longer going to talk to me. Oh, really? Actually, yeah. Some of them they're not talking to me, not even the, via messaging or social media because they are scared. Because know? of just the relation to you. Because of the relation to me. If, if somebody yes. could connect the dots between you and them. I mean, then... the, the the closest friend. Yeah. They're separated from me now. It is like a, a wall between us. Oh, wow. Not because I want, it's because they are scared. Of course. And yeah. I understand that and I left them, uh, left them alone. Yeah. You know? Wow. That's interesting. Yes. Yeah. Uh, question from Don N5SKT. How's it going, Don? Are there ham operators working for the Cuban government? Is there a way we can tell citizen operators from government operators, or should we even try? I'm guessing they listen all the time, so probably not. They they're well, going to monitor everything, right? Well, they monitor everything, but then uh, the guy that I told you, Charlie Oscar II, Bravo Victor, he always talking and fighting with the Cuban people, uh, Cuban exiles here in seven two ten. I've never been on that frequency because I'm not here on the band to to talk politics with them mm-hmm. and discuss things. Uh, everybody knows what's going on in Cuba, and I don't have to fight with them all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Uh, People like him, you know, they're they're defending the government, and the government doesn't say anything. They say to the people that are agrees with something that we say, uh, talk to us without of their knowledge, you know. Very good. Uh, so we got. It looks like Pavel, uh, or maybe it's not pronounced Pavel. C. O7WT watching here from Cuba. I have one of those 125 meters away from home it's a p-i-t-a which i think that's a an acronym that's not really a question but thank you for watching i appreciate that uh, and you know what yeah uh, pavel is watching yeah okay. he's in the chat um he's uh, he's a good friend of mine okay and, uh, good good yeah, he, i'm glad and actually he was the one who published the uh this con antenna the umbrella antenna on, on uh on i think it was twitter uh mm-hmm. yesterday mm-hmm. yesterday the day before yesterday so I didn't know that. I guess by somebody sent me the picture. Said, "See, and and yes, that's two blocks away from uh, his home." Oh, okay. And, and I know him pretty good. We went to school together. Oh, wow. We okay, went to school cool. together. Yes. The thing is, he's uh, uh, he's more intelligent than me. He he is uh, an engineer, and I couldn't finish the school because I escaped in a rat. <laughs> he's uh, a very smart guy. He's a clever guy. Uh, He's very, like very, very intelligent. Well, thank you, Pavel, for for being out here and watching. I hope you, I hope you're still watching and, and seeing this. Uh, let's see. So somebody asks. Let's see. No code general asks. So do you think they are also jamming incoming broadcasts like the VOA shortwave broadcast stations? Are they are they blocking any of that? Well, of course, they they never stop blo- blocking the the uh, the broadcast station. Uh, you saw Matt Kilo Zero Lima uh, Lima whiskey, Lima Shali whiskey. Yeah, Matt. Uh, he put on, on a video that uh, he says that in Florida, the station transmit with uh, 10 kilowatts, and at nighttime, they are authorized to transmit with 25 mm-hmm. kilowatts. Mm-hmm. So it's more than twice the uh, the power because of the jamming signal from Cuba. Okay. They used to, you know, they used to jam in the, 
the the radio from uh, from here from Florida pretty much. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's something normal. It's been there for many many years since the eighties. Uh, Pavel actually at, at, pr actually replied a little bit down further. He said uh, he lives near one of these, and then check him out on Twitter. It is C O seven W T. I'll pull him up on Twitter right now and make sure we link it. Uh, you can see how it looks in an SDR, which I did on my video. The, this is not spurious signals, he states. So, thank you. Uh, William Sharon asks, are the digital modes blocked as well? I, I imagine they don't care about FT8, right? Because nobody's talking on FT8. <laughs> yeah, nobody can say other than... Uh, than 73. Vida, signal, you know? signal 73. Yes. <laughs> yeah, you can say, you can put Patria Vida or SOS Cuba, but nothing about that. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. You know? Oh, man. Very good. Uh, Alex, is there anything you want to mention before we start wrapping things up here? I, I, you, your time was, was brilliant. This was fantastic. No, uh, no I think uh, I just wanted to thank everybody and, and tell those people that does not understand what's going on there. And don't put a comment without a thinking. Do your research before mm -hmm. you put a, a comment because um, – you're going to look like uh, a dummy in front of people who know what's going on. And then, you know, that's your, your opinion. And I'm agree with that. Sure. But uh, you're right to have an opinion. Ask and don't don't say, I mean, it's better to say, is this happening because of that? Or it's not the same as you say, oh, oh, oh this is because this. I mean, if you don't know, don't say it. I, I oh, man, that is a uh, that is a fantastic life lesson for anything, not just things re regarding what's going on in, in Cuba right now. So many mm. people state things from like a declarative position instead of one of asking. And exactly. I, I think more people should make sure they're framing their discussion and their, their way of, of conversing in more of a, do I actually know this information? Should I be stating it like I know, or should it be a question? And, I, and listen, on my video, I, I post every comment. I can delete comments, but I never sure. delete one of the comments because I don't care if they say something. Nobody has to. I mean, it is like America. There is a lot of people who live in America. They mm -hmm. don't like the country, but they don't go over here. Yeah. And there is a lot of people that doesn't live in America. They hate America, but they all wanted to come to America at yeah. one point. And the other thing is, you know, you don't have to be likable fight by everybody there is some people that don't like you and some people that like you mm -hmm. so you know uh, at this point i'm not doing the things by my person i'm doing my, the things because of the situation in cuba i'm not doing this personal i'm doing this right. to help the cuban people my right. people that's what i'm doing i and, think and, and, the, the people is the most important thing that's really what exactly. we're here to talk about is and, the and whatever somebody comments against me it's not going to affect me. I'm not going to take that personal. Right. I just read it. I don't like it, but I don't care, you know, because mm -hmm. I live in America, the best country in the earth. <laughs> well said. <laughs> uh, we got a super chat. It's from David Davenport, and he says, Alex was my first HF con uh, contact, KY4GM. So he just wanted to say thank you there, Alex. You were his first HF contact. That's beautiful. Man, That's Alex, uh, again, everybody, Alex's link is in the description to his YouTube channel. Please do go check it out. Make sure you subscribe to him. I'm going to go to the Discord after chat here shortly. Uh, Alex, have you played around at Discord at all? Have you done that whole thing? Um, not much. You know, I, I like to talk and not type in too much. I'm, I'm not good Oh, no, no. Is. This is talking. I, I, I... This is talking. Have, you have a Discord that you can talk? Yeah, it's talking. It, well, there's also text, but it, what we're going to go do in the after chat's all talking. Oh, wow, that's good. So, I would love to, and it's every day, all day long? Uh, after this show, we always do an after chat. So hang on the Zoom. I'm going to wrap things up here, but hang on the Zoom, and I'll help walk you through it, and then you can join and talk, because I'm sure people have more questions, and it's all live. All the people will get to talk, if you're down for that. Uh, Okay, yes, I have to take a break. And but, no, Ooh. sure, of course. <laughs> and well, then I will join you guys. Go ahead, take your break. Uh, I'll let you go. Thanks again. It was beautiful. But leave your Zoom open, and then uh, once I wrap things up, we'll, we'll chat, and then we can talk, okay? Okay, perfect. Uh, Thank all you right. so much. Appreciate Alex, that. Wonderfully done. Thank you so much again for being on here. Thanks for everything. So, all right. Thank you. Good. Okay, cool. And here is, uh, let's see, K0LWC also. That was the 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 other person that was mentioned so if you want to check them out on twitter you can as well they did uh post they posted on their uh youtube a video on some of the other stuff that's going on in cuba man alex 
thank you so much for being out here. What uh, that was great. That, that's a wonderful interview. I, I loved it. as we started it out, just hearing his kind of involvement in radio, and then now in this situation, we'd all like to be playing radio, right? We'd all just like to be playing radio, but sometimes things bring us into situations where we have to say something and do something. So Alex is one of those people that's out there saying things and doing things. And so I applaud him for that effort. All right, everybody, I want to say a big thank you because we're going to wrap things up and go to the Discord. If you want to join us on the Discord after chat, it's really simple. Go to the description in this video and click the link or the link uh, on the live stream. Zach has just posted the link again for Discord. It is a free application. You can get it on your phone. You can download it on your computer, and there's also a web version that you can run, and it allows for text-based chat and voice chat. And what we like to do at the end of all the shows, the Saturday live streams, is we hop over on Discord, and we have a voice chat and a text chat, but mainly voice. We'll take your questions. Maybe I'll be able to get Alex over there, and we can continue this discussion even further. So I do appreciate everybody. Let me say a big thank you to my patrons. We do have a Patron Picks episode coming up. It will be the first of the month. It's always the first Saturday of the month. So the vote for that, for the patrons that can vote on that, will go out here soon. These are the producers. So, so thank you very much, producers. I hope this, um, I hope this video is valuable to everybody. Ham Radio for Non-Techies, thank you very much. Excellent show, he says. Thanks. A lot of people in here are saying thank you to Alex. What great information. Uh, these, these type of discussions always go so fast. These hour-long discussions just fly by in a blink. So, uh, I'm extremely value, or I am extremely appreciable of Alex's time and how valuable that is. And I hope it was helpful for everybody. So, very good. All right. Again, thanks for all the patrons. Appreciate uh, appreciate the support there as well. Reading through the chat here, and make sure I didn't miss anybody. I think I got most of them. But yeah, very good. Uh, okay. If you have further questions on things we didn't answer specifically, bring them over to the Discord and we can talk a little bit more. And I think that's probably going to be the best way. Hopefully, um, we'll be able to get Alex over there because that should be fun if he can do that. BC65925 says, just passed the tech test on Wednesday, 35 of 35, and just paid for GMRS license. Man, that's a license... Uh, tag team not sure how long it takes to get to either uh it should just be online if you test it online you can pretty much download the uh, gmrs license immediately and uh the ham license will maybe take a couple of days yeah thank you anime or wild cascadia radio such a huge topic nearly impossible to cover it all in one hour good chat thank you yeah it's it's incredibly difficult and nor am i really trying to Obviously, that's why I have to have Alex out here. There's no way I would try and speak on behalf of, of any of the things that are going on there, um, nor to try and dive in with my own opinions with that information. So other than ham radio opinions and doing TDOA, which I could do. Anyway, we're going to head over to Discord here shortly. Let me play you out with the remainder of the Bezos memes. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Take it easy. See ya. Oy, oy, oy. I'm still live, so hold on one second, Alex. I'm playing my memes out of here. <laughs> you did a great job, man. Thank you. Yep. Oh, James Hannibal asks, do uh, Cuban hams have APRS capabilities? Like if they wanted to do messaging, not just a beaconing. Uh, I don't think so. Yeah. No, no, because they don't have radios with the APRS. Maybe one or two, but they don't. Right. It's not allowed to use it. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. Thank you, everybody, for watching again.